feels like I am in a dream. I am not sure if I am waiting on someone or they are waiting on me. I am far away from home, away from anything familiar. We are close to Sichuan Bana, in Falcon Yunnan, China. It's the time of the Water Festival, a local New Year event, celebrated throughout this area in two neighboring countries, Laos, Vietnam, Thailand and Myanmar. Water celebrates life, and at this time of year, being Dao's with it brings good luck. We are in a dying minority village and the people here follow Theravada Buddhism. There are temples like this throughout the area, sharing a culture more in common with neighbors down river to the south than the Han Chinese to the north. Traditional festivities include firing homemade rockets crafted from bamboo. An armorer prepares fuses for two charges, one for liftoff, one for extra boost. There is a sense of fiery bravado to see whose rocket reaches the furthest. Later I find a charming village elder by the name of Dalai who possesses a special knowledge of wild plants which he collects for use as medicine, herbs and vegetables. I am in China to discover local ingredients and traditional food, to capture the essence of indigenous cultures and their food artisans. Knowledge like Dalai's and for others like him is quickly disappearing across the globe. Sadly, we are losing too much to convenience. It's time to slow down, take note and appreciate what Mother Nature can provide. While Delai prepared herbs collected from the wild, his son Shao Lei prepares a dish of banana flour. We are in a Dai village in the south of China, few hours from the Laos border. I am here with Chef Ala, and he's going to show us how to make a dish that I really love. It's a flour banana that is going to cook for us in a special way and you're going to find it extremely interesting. Shaole has also served as village chief, like his father before him. After slicing and mincing the banana flowers, he cuts tomato and mixes them with herbs and salt, and wraps it all together in banana leaf and sets it over the slow-burning charcoal fire. Shaole also prepares local fish with a stuffing of wild herb, limes and green chili, which he then binds before placing it on the barbecue. Dai cuisine has an excellent reputation in Yunnan and in China. The taste can be spicy, sour and fragrant, chili, cilantro and lime juice. Lemongrass and a cornucopia of herbs create an unforgettable Taste sensations. Ah, okay. That sounds pretty good. That sounds great. In fact, what is that? <laughs> Next morning, the mighty Mekong River, the lifeblood of the land, vanishes into a wall of fog as thaw dropping off the edge of the earth. The river runs swift and clear, a legend in his own right.
the Mekong snakes from the Tibetan plateau through China, Laos, Burma, Thailand, Cambodia and Vietnam. It's time for me to move on and vanish like the river. I am on my way to find ancient tea garden deep in the mountains, cared for by generations of tea artisans for over 800 years. But on the way, we stop at the farmer's market, busy with morning trades. There are such a variety of fruits, vegetables and ingredients, not to mention a variety of faces. I am more interested in one shop selling a range of spices, medicinal herbs, and several other bottled ingredients I can't describe. Okay, what is that? Okay. Okay. So you have a lot of fungus, you have a lot of uh, grains, you, know, you have flowers, you have fruits, everything is organic basically from the woods. Our journey takes us higher in a mountain closer to Myanmar, into cooler temperate air past village hamlets nestled into the forest valleys and ridges, where lives have remained relatively unchanged for centuries. I am in a forest of Sichuanbana, in the Chinese province of Yunnan, in search of organic teas. Teas that produce the famous and much thought after pure teas. It's here that I'm told that I can also find one of the oldest wild tea trees in the world. After a short walk through a mix of primary and regrowth forest, I finally come across a 1900 years old tree. Some say this wild tree are the very origin of Chinese tea. Barbed wire fails to prevent some tea enthusiasts from carving their name into the tree, an old way of showing respect for a living botanic treasure. Trees like this have only been protected due to their isolation from the nearest road. Who knows how long this tree will last from the hands of tea hunters and vendors. It's wild, but it's not a tea producing tree and therefore not what I'm really looking for. <laughs> As we continue our drive, I come across a valley lined with bush tea plantation, trees planted row upon row without protection of a natural forest. With increased demand for cure, the industry went from quality to quantity, hence the abundance of plantation tea and the loss of large areas of forest. <laughs> This is a very remote area. The work is long and hard. One bird, two leaves. The hands are quick. As daylight fades, 
work continues in a tea workshop. This really is like a scene from another time, like so many others that unfold across the countryside. At all with strengths and tests of city dwellers throughout big Chinese cities. Tea pickers, some migrant workers from Thailand, bring in their loads. Children, the elderly, age is no barrier. The faces tell me more than anything else. As the tea artisan toil away into the night, I don't know which I prefer the most. An archaic scene from the past, idealized before a lens, or the sumptuous indulgence of city life, fine wine and haute cuisine. <laughs> We drive up hill, climbing past nimble finger tea plantation pickers, onwards to an elevation of 2,200 meters, over rough, freshly cut roads, to one of the famed tea mountains populated by the Lao people. I want to see the ancient tea trees planted in a forest some 800 years ago. Trees harvested at this time of year to make special pure tea. Trees passed on and picked from generation to generation. Trees handled with the special care they deserve. This is one of the oldest tea producing area in the entire world, featuring Sichuan Bana best preserved, largest ranch of ancient tea garden. The tea remains. 100% organic. Insects are living proof of the absence of any pesticides. The trees enjoy a symbiotic relationship with the surrounding plants and insects. Even the soil around the trees is carefully cultivated to keep the ground enriched with a compost of forest canopy leaves. So we are in a tea garden in Lao Banjiang. What's interesting about the people who live in this village is the way they take care of this, uh, those gardens and those trees. I mean, they really take care of them. They don't put any pesticides. They don't need to. It's, it's totally, we are in a wild, we are in, a, in the mountains. You know, we are about three hours by car from the nearest town. And, uh, and it is really interesting to see those people. They live with nature. It's very rare to see such tall trees, which are completely unlike the small bush tea trees found in the terrace plantations. There is a real one-on-one -on -one relationship between man and his garden. For me, this is what I mean by wild and bear. It's truly natural, stripped of any pretension or additives. It reminds me of going out as a child and picking wild berries with my dad. It was here in Lao Bajang that I met a tea producer by the name of Ursher and a local grower called Mr. Chen. Chen's family has been growing, harvesting and processing tea here by hand 
for centuries. 这老班章呢，就是乔木型大叶种。呃，平常采摘呢，主要是一般是标准一点的是一芽二叶嘛，一个芽两个叶。然后像这样嫩一点的话，我们可以采一芽三个叶，一个芽头三个叶子，可以这样， okay. 这样都可以的。因为这样的出来的那个汤的滋味才醇厚一点，嗯、厚重。Okay. 老班章的特点，芽头都比较粗壮，这个芽头做出来的茶叶外观来讲很美观。Each family in this village has around 100 trees, and everyone is involved in the picking and processing of the tea. Even this process of roasting the tea by hand is 100% natural. There are no blend of teas from other tea growers, let alone from areas outside this one village. They are true artisans, receiving a fair trade price for their homegrown organic teas. I would like to stay longer on this mountain, but there is one more place I need to visit to make this trip complete. I've heard of a famous village much further away from here and only 30 kilometers away from Laos, which is one of the starting points for the ancient Tios Road. We are in Iwu village, in the heart of Sichuan Bana. This village was the starting point of the ancient tea road. For hundreds of years, people were trading pure tea with the West, namely Nepal, Tibet, Turkey, and Europe. Regretfully, this old village appeared largely forgotten by time and by the local authorities. I can't imagine how long and how difficult that must have been to lead pack mules and horses loaded with tea, traveling all those distances over cobblestone trails. Like most rural villages in China, young people are nowhere to be seen, having headed out on their own trails of hardship, looking for work in the cities. I am able to meet and talk with a local tea trader called Mrs. Lee, who makes and sells her own special pure tea from this old shop, which itself is over 400 years old. A good pure tea from ancient tea tree gardens has a rich earth-like flavor. It can express a special chi or energy. Like wine, this sense of appreciation comes from experience. This is Wang Gong Zai. Okay, that's it. Wang Gong. Is Ding Jia Zai Wang Gong Hong. Next, my chocolate. Because we are doing it ourselves. We are doing it. My tea is mainly tea leaves and a few high-level tea leaves. And we are doing it ourselves. 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 Yes. Thank. It's a very big tree. It's not been planted. It's delicious. The tree is different. If you want it, it's been planted. It's not been planted. It's not been planted. In our Yiwu tree, it's very famous in the Yiwu tree. It's very famous in the Yiwu tree. Yiwu has a certain melancholy, just like the faces I saw in a Bulang village tea workshop. Something tired, lost, forgotten. Yet, in both cases, there is a rich culture and an history of tradition worth preserving. Yeah. 
We've come to the end of our journey here in Sichuan Bana. This experience helped me to realize how diverse China is both in terms of culture and food. So please join me on our next adventure on Wild and Bear.